everyone and welcome to season two episode two of from hope to glory at truro city with me the united city fm welcome along so early days in season two we had some worries about the team bonding together and being able to uh put the performance on the pitch early in the season because there's so many new players well we needn't have worried it's going really really well <laughs> So yes, it's been a phenomenal start so far. I'm aware that it's early in the season and momentum and motivation and morale can all change and have an impact on how the team plays. And we might go on a really bad run at some point. But just at the moment, it feels like that we might be slightly overpowered for tier six of English football, just slightly. But that can all change, as I say. And we do have some slightly lesser players in our squad that if one or two injuries happen, maybe that will damage us down a little bit but so far it's going really really well and here is the recent run of fixtures so we started with Wildston the last episode you and I were together for a 1-0 win wasn't vintage performance by any stretch but we did get the points and that set us on a very very good path uh, Hampton, Hampton, Hampton and Richmond Concord Bath City all played in the Vanarama National League South and all defeated quite comfortably to be honest star of the show Andrew Neal two goals in this game four in the next one in the next is doing really really well for us so far this season ably supported by a lot of others and then we had two cup games where I rotated the entire 11 gave uh, a load of new guys the opportunity to play and bed themselves in a little bit we we got two good wins but they weren't quite as dominant the simple reality is we came uh, back from uh, um, behind in this particular match uh, against St Ives and eventually won the game and then we struggled through against Haringey in the um, in extra time to eventually get ahead in the 121st minute out of 120 so you can see that we left it really late it was a bit of a struggle but the positives, we went both, uh, we went through in both comp competitions and we also gave game time to a lot of the other guys in the squad and therefore rested a lot of what I would consider to be our first 11. There have been a couple of changes in the first 11 though and today one of our key midfielders is out so a bit of a replacement there. So here we are in the tactics page. You can see that our reserve goalkeeper is out for a couple of days. He's uh, out for up to 11 days. He's been out for a little while already, but that's okay. I think as long as we don't have an injury to Hammond as well, we'll be fine. The, the person that's out that's going to be an impact on us has been out for the last couple of weeks, to be honest, and has been a little bit of a miss. Uh, Saxon Early is now just due back to training tomorrow. Isn't quite ready for a full game yet, so we're leaving him out today. But he has been a bit of a miss uh, for the last couple of weeks. But it gives me a couple of opportunities to show you a couple of new players. Uh, remember that we dealt with a lot of the transfers from the summer last episode. But not all of them because there were so many. And today I think I've got three to show you. Let's work through them. So at right fullback we've had a little bit of an issue here. Uh, Jake Walker started the season. Didn't play particularly well. Morgan has come into the squad in the last couple of games. Played a couple of games for us looked a little bit better again there's the pace and the acceleration that is trying that I'm trying to base our team around there's some gaps elsewhere but in key uh, positions in key statistics should I say or attributes we've got some good ones positioning is good determination is good tackling is good markings all right crossing is okay so you can see that in terms of being a fullback He's got most of the things that we need to a reasonably high level. So potentially, whilst uh, one of our fullbacks was struggling on the right side in uh, Walker, the other one, Morgan, looks a little bit better so far. So it looks like it's his position to play for for a little while at least. So that's the first change. The second change is that this guy, Jordan Richards, comes in to replace uh, Saxon Early. 
and he's a good um, replacement in terms of he can play that sort of holding midfield role in the central line or the defence midfield line. He can also play right back a little bit. So there's some good cover in a few positions here. But what we're playing him in, in this central midfield role, he'll be playing as the Carrillero, uh, just shuffling from side to side, uh, mopping up any loose balls, trying to get tackles in where possible in that central midfield area. And he's got reasonable attributes in some of those in passing and tackling but again a reasonable amount of pace good acceleration determination is strong first touch is good teamwork work rate are both high so there's a good all-round central midfielder here and so far he's come in and done okay for us in the three games he's had to play Saxon early obviously will get his position back when he's uh, fit to do so so that's the second of our three and the third is on the bench and it's this guy it's Ch uh, Chanel uh, Brandon Chanel and he's one of our central defensive options lacks the little bit of pace that some of the others have had couldn't quite find the pace I wanted in central defense right the way across all of our options but he's a reasonably good defender good determination good tackling marking heading could be a little bit better but not too bad but decent strength as well so he should be able to uh, shimmy people off the ball and nick the ball from them etc he's not going to play all the time but when we need him to he's a decent option and he comes onto the bench today just because the normal replacement in Murray is just lacking a little bit of conditioning having played the last couple of games so that's why we've made the choices that we have there's still a couple of players in here that I'll need to tell you about if and when they get some action in the first team but so far these are the ones that we've got of course, all of this has led so far to us being top of the table after four matches. Such a brilliant start. And in all of the competitions as well, all the cup competitions, with some decent opposition in the next round of each of them, I would suggest. So there's still more room for some cup runs, I think. But it's all about the league, really. And so far, so good. And for today's game against Braintree, where are Braintree in the league? Let's find them. They're in eighth position compared to our first position. So they're going to provide some stiff opposition, but we'll have to see whether we can uh, perform well again. We're away from home. And the team for today's match against Braintree is Hammond in goal, Morgan at right back, Roundsfell at left back, Kazoo and Stavrou in central defence, Richards, Rooney and Harvey in central midfield, McKenna on the right, Salam on the left, and Neil up top with a bench of Chanel, Riley Lowe, Petit, Hagen and Horsewood. So let's get into today's game and see what happens. So in recent matches in the run that we've been on, I haven't always led in with a team talk. Sometimes I've just let them go out there and play. And I think that's what I'm going to do today. What I find is it seems to have more of an impact then later on in the match. If you need to communicate some things with them at half time, etc. Just to get them more motivated at that point. But um, whilst we are firm favourites for most of the games that we're playing, I think I'm going to uh, sometimes let them just go out and explain express themselves in the first half and sort out any issues for the second half. We're in our orange tops and black shorts today, our third kit, um, just so you know, because we haven't played too much with that so far. And we were already a goal down after 11, 12 minutes of the game. And it was a fantastic strike at goal, wasn't it? The goalkeeper almost got to it, couldn't quite keep it out. But the throw-in comes in and it's uh, sent back to the throw-in taker. And then Edge, really far out, um, almost had a shot himself, but then drifts it off to Barton and he powers it in the back of the net. And it was a fantastic shot, but it's something that's undoing us quite a lot this season so far. I've seen it three or four times. It's those really long shots from like 30 yards out have really caused us a problem. And there's two or three goals that have gone in from a lot of them. So there's a problem there. But a ball over the top for Harvey and an immediate response. A couple of minutes later, having gone one down, the ball over the top from the goalkeeper, which is something that we've been using to our advantage quite a lot this season, specifically for Neil to run on. This time, it's Harvey that runs onto it over the top of the defence. Even though his pace isn't extraordinary, he was able to get there 
take it slightly away from the defenders and then power that shot across the goalkeeper and we go one all after 13 minutes a long long um, throw in goes straight to the keeper on this occasion but what I'm finding with the long throws at this level specifically is chuck it in the box and it causes all sorts of havoc and we could get some good things from it here and there so that's the intention with the throw-ins this season again the ball over top for Salam to run onto down the left hand side of the box and then cuts the ball across kind of shot come cross couldn't quite make up his mind and doesn't quite do either particularly well and in the end it goes harmlessly out and again it's a throw in down the left hand side but we intercept it McKenna really gets a really good foot in there and then has a completely clear run right the way into the box puts it into Neil and somehow they managed to get it clear of the goal but it was a brilliant run and cross in and then Neil couldn't quite find the finish and that's unusual for him having been on some brilliant scoring form in recent days so I would have expected him to at least um, put it either side of the keeper a little bit more and made him do uh, even more to keep it out but there we go so far it's looking pretty decent though half time approaches we've had the slight better of the first half I think 50 50 possession so that's interesting not too many shots at goal not too many shots on target and therefore the xg ratings are down as well but we have had the better of it so I don't think we can be too harsh on them but what I would say is that maybe we just need to kick them a little bit just to get them focused a little bit more. So we're going to pump the fists. It's time for everyone to dig in, give what you've got left. We deserve to win this. Go out and do that. And then as soon as we get out there, go into the shouts and fire up the team for the first few minutes of this second half um, and see whether we can get anything from this game more than what we already have. And a good, good free kick, a long free kick from distance goes into that far post, looping head of it doesn't quite challenge the goalkeeper enough and it wasn't as dangerous as I'd, as I'd like. But the pressure is coming. Morgan on that far side with a corner kick. And again, the header from Rooney this time goes uh, inches over the top of the bar. And we are knocking at the door. We are causing them some problems. But we're already at 68 minutes. And I think it's almost time to make a couple of substitutions. 73 minutes in. I think we can't wait much longer. Let's go in and see who's struggling a little bit. We can see that Richards is struggling with his conditioning. So he'll have to come out. Petit's a good replacement for him him though in that role so he can go in there and play there we've got some nerves from McKenna Hagen can go back out on that right hand side hasn't particularly done brilliantly Hagen so he lost his place but he's still an able player to bring off the bench so let's see if he can do something and then we've got um, a few low ratings like a left fullback that we potentially could change I think we need to be a little bit more positive though in terms of where we're changing our players and I think it's going to be this top third. So we're going to take Neil out and Horsewood, who played the last couple of cup games for us in our rotated 11, did pretty well. So there's some confidence for him in there as well. So maybe he can get onto one of these. And we're just going to boost the positivity up to attacking for the last sort of five or six minutes of the game. And just see if we can get on the front foot and nab a goal to keep our really good run going. They've drifted it back to the goalkeeper. They've settled the Play down he goes long can we win the ball we don't win the ball and they come at us down their right hand side storage on the ball he's pushed right uh, right over and then has to drift across in and the goalkeeper with no pressure has no problems with it and five minutes to go gets another chance to find a, an over the top ball and he does so brilliantly Hagen onto the goalkeeper and he puts it away and that is a weapon that we've been using an awful lot this season uh, so far on those counter-attacks when we have the ball in the goalkeeper's hands we often find that it goes over the top and we can find somebody to um, have an effort on goal this time it was Hagen from the right hand side cuts into the box brings out the goalkeeper there's a huge amount of space down the the side of the goalkeeper to put it into and he doesn't make a mistake and with a few minutes to go we're 2-1 up and maybe the points are coming home with us which is fantastic and they do and the positive start of the season continues all the wins none of the losses we made a little bit of hard work of it occasionally again today as we have in the last couple of games but the points are the points and today we get them
So as we usually do, let's spend a couple of minutes just looking at the analysis of this particular match. First things to say, we dominated the chances. Four to ten. We had ten shots at goal. Six on target, which is a good conversion rate on target at least. And we got two goals from that. So... Uh, it's, it's not a bad performance at all. Uh, a little bit less than a 1xG rating. So that's a good conversion rate on the chances as well. And we just upped our possession a little bit. Passes completed with the new style of play that we've got this season. It's not quite as accurate as it has been last season. But I'm hoping that as the season progresses and we get used to playing it a little bit more, maybe that will raise up slightly. I just want them in the early 80s if I could. Um, but that's not too bad. So there's the XG ratings. You can see that we did far, far better than our opponent's brain tree on this particular occasion. Um, or did we? Yes, we did. I got that round the right way. For a second, I thought we'd <laughs> I'd got confused as to the colour schemes of the two teams, etc. But um, behind where I'm sitting here, you, uh, you can just see that we had a lot of central midfield possession. We keep a really, really tight shape, which is fantastic. That's what we really want us to be. Um, and I'm, I'm more than happy to keep that really confined shape because it means that we're defending well as a unit and then we're breaking as a unit as well. Um, and you can see that possession across the pitch was decent. So uh, I've not got too many worries about that. In terms of our, our shot map, you can see the, the 10 chances that we had um, and we uh, got a few that were off target down this left hand side. Primarily there's one for Kazoo off a corner. Uh, there's primarily corner kicks it seems to be that's providing some of these opportunities for our central defenders like Stavrou and Kazoo to get the chances and weren't quite able to get them on target. Down the right hand side a little bit more accurate. And um, it just means that that's where the goalkeeper is having to do the work. So that's positive that we're putting the goalkeeper under pressure. Overall, would I always like a few more chances? Of course I would. But it felt like a quite a tight game with not too many chances for either. I mean, look at the small amount that we gave away. So in the end, I think the chances are decent. And the amount of chances on target were pretty good. Maybe we could have done slightly better with a couple of them. But I think that's a bit nitpicky, really. Tyler Harvey with a really good performance. Hasn't quite shone this season so far as much as Neil has. So it's good to see him raising his game slightly. If we go into the team stats and just look at our shots, um, and we'll just put it onto our own ones to have a look at. There's the two goals from the right-hand side, as we've seen. We missed a few from the left-hand side. Those are shots that were off target. We didn't hit the woodwork. Four that were saved across the penalty box, and none that were blocked. So a reasonable um, day in front of goal I would suggest for the chances that we created I'd still like one or two more here we go with the passes completed just because it makes me giggle all the time it's always going to you could come back in five um, seasons from now in terms of uh, football manager 26 or whatever and I'd still be giggling at this page because there's so many of them what do you make of it really uh, intercepted passes now that's interesting uh, we did have a few uh, but not too many, so I'm not unhappy with this page. Um, I think that's a, a reasonable amount to have. And the blocked passes, only two blocks. So we did pretty well with our passing game today until you realise these were our unsuccessful ones. And there loads of the long throws are not quite working, but it still creates havoc in the box. So it's not something I shall be changing anytime soon. But you can see that just at the moment, they're not quite as accurate as I'd like them to be in future seasons. One of the things that we'll be asking our fullbacks to have is a slightly better long throw than the, the ones that we currently have. But even so, it's not too bad. And a lot of these are hopeful balls into the sort of top of the penalty box. So it's the style of play, I think, more than anything. There's some unsuccessful ones in there, but we won't worry about that too much just at the moment. This is pretty good. Not too many out of play, so I'm happy with that. And then we get this one, which is fantastic, which is key, uh, the key passes for the game. And there were several that got some really good shooting opportunities in the box. Just a little bit more accuracy on the shot would probably be good. But not too bad a day in terms of the shots and the passes. Let's find one other thing to look at. 
and let's have a look at set pieces this will be interesting because i think there's some stuff that we can work on in here as we've seen the throw-ins there were loads of them and a lot of them were not as accurate as i'd like but it's something that we're working on attacking free kicks we had 10 a couple of them were a bit wayward weren't they really but a couple of them found them found their way into the box and we didn't make the most of all of them potentially but not too bad I'd quite like a few of these to be more central than sort of down the size of the box, but not too bad. And then we've got the defensive free kicks. And these are the long ones from right the way back in the um, the defensive unit of the game, of the team, should I say. And you can see that we took a couple of them short, but we send a couple of them long as well. That's what you want a little bit is to mix it up just so the opposition don't know. Um, but it's still something that we're working on. And then the corner kicks, we didn't have too many, but it did get a couple of really good positions for us. And if you remember, at least one or two of them were headed over the top by the likes of Kazoo and Stavrou from our central defence. Um, we're putting them on the fr on the near post and just aiming that ball to them as much as we can. So all in all, it's not too bad. I did a lot of work over the summer in terms of setting up set pieces. And I think there's some improvements that can be made still in terms of just honing them slightly but overall they're creating us a, a few opportunities so I'm not going to complain too much about that so that's the analysis that I need to do for today I don't think there's much more that we need to learn I think we played pretty well I think we could have given ourselves a bit better chance of getting a couple more goals and that would have calmed the game down a little bit but we've been a little bit like that recently but we still got all the points and that ultimately is the only real statistic that matters. So in trying to figure out exactly what we do for next episode, there's a couple of different routes I want to, uh, that I could go down in terms of showing cup games. I think I'll focus purely on the league just at the moment. I don't think we're ready for a complete cup run just yet. So I think unless we draw a big side in the FA Cup, maybe, I think I'll keep it to the league. So I could either play the Chippenham game, come back slightly earlier, or the Billericay game. But I do want to finish the calendar year off by showing the Oxford City game. So I think we'll go for Chippenham. Next episode, we'll come back. I'll play a couple of games in between time. Lewis, Dorking and Welling to play in between times. Just to see if we can keep this run going. We've got Chichester in the Emirates FA Cup as well. And the second uh, uh, qualifying round for that. So there's a little bit of work to do to get through to the, um, the sort of point where all the big guys come into the FA Cup. So lots of cup games to play in this particular period of time. But as I say, we'll focus on the league. So next up will be Chippenham. And then the following episode, we'll play Oxford City just to round off the calendar year. And then we'll just have to see in the early part of January who we draw in the FA Cup. Should we get to that point? and see if it's worthwhile putting a game in there. But other than that, it would then be coming back again to the start of February so I can update you on any January transfer window stuff. So those are the next few episodes that we've got. It's not going to be a long season, I don't think, this time around. I think it'll probably be sort of six, seven episodes, maybe eight episodes to get us through to the end of this particular season. Depending on whether we finish in the playoffs, it might be more. So that's the plan. But next up, Chippenham. So far, though, look at this runner form. It's been absolutely phenomenal phenomenal and they really have been doing a fantastic job and it's all about the pace of the side I think I think I did the right thing in the summer by just reshaping it a little bit and bringing that pace in and trying to dominate the game that way so far it's working still a long way to go though so I hope you'll join me for the next episode and Chippenham until then though uh, thank you for joining me today I really appreciate the um, the support on the series so far keep it going keep clicking that like button for me and help me um, know that you're invested in the uh, the series that I'm putting out but also helps me get seen by lots of other people subscribe to the channel if you're new and having a look around all the different football manager content that's currently going on there's so much out there but I'm really pleased if you've managed to find me click that subscribe button and join my United City community the more the merrier there's loads of ways to do that also through Twitter and Discord and Patreon and merchandise stores and all sorts of things I've got going on and they're all linked in the description description below so check them out for me if you can do that that would be phenomenal until next time though take care of yourselves i'll see you very soon bye for now